Hey guys, welcome back. It's Kate, aka Wanderlusting Lawyer. And as you can probably tell, I am off to work out. Um, but I have about 10 minutes, so I figured I'd make you guys another video. Um, I'm going to be reviewing my second Osprey pack. This is the Tempest 40. It does come in a 30 liter version, which is a little bit smaller. Um, and I don't think has some of the features that this pack has, but it's another option for you. Um, just looking at this pack, I really like the look of this pack. I think it's got some nice color accents. It's a bit similar to the kite um, that we looked at before, um, but a little bit more distinction with the gray and then just a darker blue accent. Um, this is a 40 liter pack, but is surprisingly really lightweight. I think that's because of a less rigid um, suspension. It's a lot more of a flexible bag than some of the others. Um, and I, it clocked in at barely two pounds with my weigher. Um, so this is super lightweight and I really, really like that about this pack. Um, in terms of some of the features, again, it's a women's specific pack like the other ones I bought. Um, it does have a great front stash pocket that has a clip on top and is pretty big. I think it's probably a bit smaller than the one in the kite, but it's still pretty big and allows you to store a lot of gear. Um, you also have some extra clips. Well, you really have nooks and crannies all over, but um, I think this is good for like a reflector light, they say, so that's something good to note as well. Um, this one does not come with a rain uh, cover, which I guess maybe accounts for some of the lighter weight as well, but you can certainly buy one independently from Osprey or whoever you want that might also fit this pack. Um, so this one has, uh, it's similar to the kite, it has a different uh, back style, um, but it's similar in that there's no space again between the back of the pack and um, this back part. But no area to stick our hand, I guess I'll say. But there is this mesh panel that allows the pack not to itself sit right on your back. And you also have um, a lot of space for air to get out, as well as these channels that help provide um, structure there. I don't know if you can see, but they are um, a little bit cushiony right there. And you have a very um, less substantial hip belt. It's fairly big, but it's a lot more flexible um, and the foam is different. It doesn't come all the way around, but I find no problem with these seams. Um, they're really soft and smooth, and I'll confirm that when I put it back on my back, but uh, I haven't really noticed any issue with that. So it is a nice um, back suspension with more um, areas to store things. This is actually cute. It has a little um, strap pocket there. I'm not sure exactly what you could fit in there. Maybe some chapstick or a pocket knife. It's certainly not big enough for a phone, but it is just a nice thing to have that it would be cool if more bags had this because you never, um, you never can have too many little pockets in your pack. And again, as os all Osprey packs, it has the bungees on the um, straps for the stow and go for your poles. So if that's a feature you like, it's right there. But again, I don't see any other bungees on the front of the pack to store your poles. So that's something to think about. Um, like the other Osprey pack, it has the adjustable torso, so you would just uh, break the Velcro seal and then adjust it for your own back. And like the other Osprey pack, it also has um, it has both a a clip and a, I'm not sure if you can use both of these, but it has this external hydration reservoir. Right now my hand is not inside where you'd store the pack stuff. So again, I think Ospreys are pretty good for people that like to have an external hydration reservoir pouch um, so that you don't risk getting your clothes wet and you can keep it um, separate from your gear. More space for it. Um, in terms of accessing this pack, so this one is like the other, like the kite, also um, more or less a top loader, but it does feature additional access. Um, so you, again, just pull, <laughs> and you do have a good amount of space in here. It's really easy to access, it's really big, and although you don't have a side zipper like you have on the kite, you do have a bottom zipper, which allows you to get into what they call the sleeping bag 
compartment, but unlike the kite, there's no layer separating the rest of the pack from this bottom compartment. So it's maybe not as good for dirty stuff unless you have it in another bag. But I think some of these more streamlined features help keep down on the weight of this pack. But um, at least it does provide you another access point through the bottom to grab something if you needed something from down there and then shove it back in. You're not just coming through the top. So that's nice. You again, you have this nice zipper pouch here. Um, I believe there's a key clip. Yeah, a key clip in there, which is great. Um, you can just store whether it's a passport or an extra layer or something up there. And then again, another pocket right up here in the lid. So lots of places to store things. All right, let's get down to fit. See how fast I'm getting with these videos now? And I will, once I put it on, I will talk to you guys again about the, the hip belt pockets and the water uh, bottle pockets. And as I said before, if you want to see what actual gear I'm loading this with, go watch my video about the Osprey kites, because that's where I talk about my stuff in more detail. But basically, it's my large items, pants, shirts, towel, blanket, etc. this a bit more. Then I have my smaller items and you can really feel how roomy this pack is. You know I don't love top loaders but they seem to be quite roomy so that's nice. Um, normally I'd probably put these sandals on the bottom but in the interest of time I'm just gonna shove them right here. Got my external backpack, a couple Stop kits, pretend first aid kits. I'm just gonna stuff everything in here, but you could use this great upper pocket. Um, put my nook, guidebook, almonds, of course. And you guys, I still have plenty of room in here and I haven't even used any of the other pockets. So the space on this bag is great. And I, you know what, another thing I think that makes this so lightweight is the material. It does feel like definitely a, a lighter material, but really sturdy as well. Um, and just so you can see, if you have any questions, this is like, if you needed something from right here, you could just open it right there, unzip it and get it. So to be honest, for a top loading pack, I do like uh, the layout of this bag. Um, my, sorry, my other layers here um, can shove right in the front, my long sleeve shirt. My jacket, you know, it's not the prettiest, but we're good to go. So I'll put the pack on here. And I really like, as I've been saying in these videos, I prefer the feel of a less substantial backpack. I think all the suspension, all the straps and everything, it's just too much for me for this Camino. So in terms of that, this is a pack that I really like. I, the hip belt is enough to certainly support the weight on your hips, but it doesn't dig in anywhere. It feels really nice. It feels like it would be comfortable. Um, the straps feel really good. Here, I'll show you so you can see it. But again, for me, I think I wish it had that back where it comes away from your body a little bit, just because I worry about how much I would be sweating on the trail. But honestly, guys, this, is, this pack feels really good when I walk. There's no real noise when I move. Um, there's no, doesn't feel like the items are shifting, so it's nice in that sense. One problem is with the water bottle pockets. It's, again, they're really high and really hard to maneuver. I'm not even gonna try further because there's no point. Um, but this one does have the side access with the pockets. So if you wanna put your bottle like that, you can. Now, I don't know how useful that is because it's not very comfortable with your bottle digging into your back like that. Um, I guess you could maneuver in from the side and try to get your bottle up like that. That's probably what I would do. But you see, it's not, there we go. I mean, that's how long it'll take you until I guess you get used to it. So you should just know that the pockets aren't going to have as much accessibility as you might like, um, but they certainly are better with this side cutout right here. That is nice. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is the hip belt pockets. Unfortunately, these are a little bit smaller than one of the ones I've seen. This is just a phone case um, for those of you that love Harry Potter. Me too. And it'll fit. This is the 7. 
Um, but then we're back to these terrible, 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 terrible Osprey zippers. I guess that wasn't too bad, but they're not as zippable as I'd like them to be. And then just so you can see kind of for reference how much they fit, got a granola bar, chapstick, pocket knife, and the other one, put another battery in a granola bar. So they will fit your stuff, but it's, I can't, you know, I can't zip it. If I can't zip it with one hand and I have to reach back and get the zipper in the back, it just doesn't make for an easy stress-free pack. That said, it does feel really good on, this is maybe my second favorite right now. Um, so I'll update you guys. I may end up keeping this one. Um, may end up just purchasing two packs. Well, I purchased them all, but may end up not returning two packs and just committing to keeping them and whichever one works out better, great. Um, and the other one I'll keep for more, I guess, shorter hikes around town. But again, this was the Osprey Tempest 40. I hope this is helpful and you're enjoying the videos and I'll have another one for you soon. Bye guys.